Hello guys and welcome to uh, RangeB World Thunder Plane Analysis. Today we are going to take a look at one of the planes I personally think was most broken before 1.31 and it's not just my opinion, most people thought it was. And it was. Uh, the P-38 Gym. Uh, I actually did an um, arcade review on the xp 38 g which is one of the most boring uh, videos I have ever put up in YouTube and that was simply because the plane couldn't pit I mean, it had decent rollability it had not bad rather authority but it simply had no elevator it, it was like flying something with uh, uh, some kind of wet stripped into the, the, the elevator it was really useless um, but well, 1.31 has brought a whole lot of changes for flight models to many planes and the P-38G is one of them uh, by the way, uh, anything that relates to this plane is also related to the XP-38G level 11, they are basically exactly the same uh, plane, just one is a gift plane and of course has the rewards of one and the other one is a normal one and uh, one that is in the trajectory. Speaking of trajectories, um, the P-38E is a level 10 plane which is midway between the P-63As and the P-63C and is on the way to the P-51DC5. The plane uh, costs uh, 1,900 to repair in arcade and 5,500 to repair in historical, which is not bad at all. I mean, this is a pretty uh, cheap plane to repair. It has a reward cost of, uh, well, a reward of 300%. Um, so it's not a bad money maker at all. Um, it's labeled as a heavy fighter, but actually this was not a heavy fighter. This was a proper uh, long range and escort fighter. Uh, it's not a lightweight by any means, but it's a surprising uh, performer in a lot of categories and one that is very much uh, underestimated by everyone else. Um, let's let's get rid of the things these things right now. Uh, this thing has uh, four machine guns and one uh, 20 millimeter cannon. Uh, standard ammunition I use, omnipurpose for both of them. They do the job and they do it quickly. Um, but just look at where those weapons are. They are all in the nose and this is one of the heaviest um, fire cones in the game. Um, I mean with this you might have almost twice the firepower than um, uh, 109 has uh, I mean you have twice the machine guns and um, a 20 millimeter and most German 109s have 7.92 millimeter uh, um, machine guns not 50 cals so this is a very 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 effective uh, weapon setup uh, one of the things uh, I think is the best out of this plane is that historically this plane was not just a good fighter it was an excellent fighter bomber it could load a lot of uh, rockets and a couple um, 500 kilogram bombs well 1000 pound bombs um, yet in the game you can't and this is good why this is good because whoever flies this plane is going to fly it as it should as a fighter not, not as a makeshift attack plane which is not Speaking of which, uh, really, I'm having troubles recording um, uh, good gameplay for uh, allied teams. I mean, there are so many lumberjacks around. Really, drop the bombs, drop the rockets and go up there and fight with everyone else. Because otherwise you're going to get raped. But, whatever. The plane. This is a weird plane in many aspects. And also, right now it has Mm, the advantage of not suffering from the biggest drawback this plane had in, in, historic, in real life. In real life, mm, there's something called compressibility. Uh, where your plane is very, very fast, the air that is forced up and under your wings is accelerated to very high, higher speeds over than what your plane is moving. 
When those uh, speeds reach uh, supersonic, they create a shock wave. And uh, that might be a problem because the shock wave created on the wing can um, fall on the tail unit and lock up the controls. And this plane was probably the plane that most suffered from that uh, in World War II. It was a phenomenon that wasn't known at the moment this plane was designed, but it really um, affected it a lot. Uh, the inner wing, uh, I mean near the fuselage of the P-38, created a shock wave that affected the whole uh, elevator, locked it up in place, the plane started uh, nosing down and accelerated more in a dive and with the elevator locked uh, it couldn't get out of a dive and a lot of P-38s were lost that way. In the game right now compressibility is not modeled, so this doesn't happen. Still try to uh, fly this plane realistically because sooner or later it will come and then you'll find yourself in a whole pile of shit if you are used to fly this plane the wrong way. Um, this goes hand to hand with, um, I mean, it's a big drawback and when compressibility is in the game it's going to uh, cut a lot of advantages of this plane because one of the biggest advantages of this plane is how it dives. It's an absolutely stunning diver. This plane is heavy and I mean it, heavy. And it's got nice aerodynamics and as such it really dives and accelerates in a dive like mad. Um, the thing is, of course, right now you can dive up to whatever speed you want, up to the limit, structural limit of the plane. Uh, in the future it's not going to be that way, so get used not to depend on that. Of course, this plane is a boom and thumber, mainly. Not because it can turn. Actually, with combat flaps, this plane um, actually can keep it up with a 109G for pretty lengthy periods of time. And um, out turns. Uh, for Wolf 1 enemies. Totally, they do. Um, so it's not something you should disregard, the turning ability of this plane. Also, if you are using... <coughs> sorry. If you are using this with a joystick, it has an, an amazing um, advantage that is that both um, engines rotate the opposite ways. So it has no torque. This what means is that the stall of this plane is very, 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 very nice. You don't drop a wing. You don't mm, snap out of your flight. Instead, when you stall, the plane drops the, its nose and if you let it go, it immediately gains lift again. Uh, historically, the pilots used this ability to stall without dropping a wing to um, chain a series of uh, fast uh, stall and recoveries to narrow down the, the circles a lot. Combined with uh, combat flaps, this was called the clover leaf maneuver and uh, was pulled very successfully by American pilots in World War II. So this is a plane that actually benefits a lot from using it with joystick. So I actually would recommend you to do so. Another side benefit of this thing is that at very low speeds, when going up vertical, the answer of the rudder of this plane is simply staggering. The plane is so stable in hammerheads with no wing trying to, to snap out of, of control. It's one Probably the best uh, out of the jets, of course, is probably the best fighter in, in War Thunder in what regards to very slow vertical maneuvers, simply because of the fact it has no torque. And uh, believe me, that's a big advantage. This advantage is, well, it's heavy. It's not bad accelerating or climbing, but it's not good accelerator or, or climber. I mean, this is the G version, not the later uh, G and uh, L versions that actually had a very, very, very good uh, climb rate. As such, uh, at uh, game start, you don't want to head directly for the front. You want to climb out in a different direction and then correct your attitude and go for the front. Um, also, that it can turn the slow speeds doesn't mean it's good at it. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And finally, uh, you can see that both engines are in twin boom configuration. This means that a lot of the mass of the plane is out of the central axis. And that means that inertia moments are very big in this plane. The plane is... N n I wouldn't call it uh, a slow roller. It doesn't roll very quickly, but it's not really slow. Uh, rolling. The problem with this plane is not the um, pace of the roll. The problem is the inertia of the roll. 
to change uh, rolling directions, you really have to um, overcome a lot of resistance because these two engines are out of the rolling axis and they are trying to inertia, they are trying to keep their movement. So to overcome that, you need a lot of elevation to the opposite side and as such, starting rolls, uh, changing the direction of rolls is really, really, really a problem. And this is probably mm, the biggest drawback of, of this plane against planes like the Focus 190. A Focus 190 simply can roll one side, pull, roll the other side, pull away, and you are still trying to, pull, to follow the first roll. It is so mm, bad. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, later versions of the P38 had hydraulic assisted ailerons, which improved roll rate, but the roll inertia was always a problem for this plane. So, if you have a P38 in your 6, try to shake it off using fast rolls and fast changes of roll direction. And if you are in one, try to adjust for that and planning ahead of your movements, because really, it takes a lot to change roll directions. As a boom and zoomer, it's an Excellent plane. Uh, and well, you are going to see a game. I, I really was feeling amazing. This plane, well flown, is exceedingly powerful. I don't know why people say this plane doesn't can't fly at all. I, 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 I don't. I simply don't. The problem is, of course, that you need the initial advantage. Well, in the disadvantage, this plane can be a handful to fly. First of all, because it's very big. You can't really see how big it is because well, all American planes are uh, very big, but let's compare it with a Focus 190. Uh, BF 190, sorry. Come on, load, load, there you go. Well, doesn't become really apparent. Ah, uh, yeah, because the camera, if you, if you have seen it, snaps away. But yeah, this is, I mean, a BF 109 is this engine and the wings is much smaller than this. It's a very big target and a very easy to hit one. Also, in the, the, in the defensive, uh, you have some problems because of the roll rate. Defensive maneuvers based on the roll rate are not going to, use, uh, to work a lot. And as such, you have to trust in uh, turning um, defenses. And those, I mean, the plane doesn't turn bad, but doesn't turn that well either. So this is a tricky plane to fly in the defensive, but on the, in the, on the offensive, this thing absolutely and totally signs. I mean, for real. Just keep the move in the vertical. Um, try to anticipate your rolls. That's very important. And uh, just blast away because these uh, weapons really are really effective. Um, you are going to see a couple of videos right now. One of them is mm, based on defensive flying. What do you want to do when flying defensively on this plane? And um, the other is going to be, well, a proper gameplay with kills and all the stuff. So, well, let's move on and see those videos. So, let's start by watching a very standard opening in Allied teams vs. Germans. Uh, Higher, Focus for Nanny coming. Look at that, that stop hat. Oh, it was close to killing him later. Well. Uh, he's coming, of course, Mas Heiger. He's actually rolling up a seat to fall down on me, and I have a second that has just crossed me. Uh, I'm in no position to fight this guy, so what I do is to use my absolutely insane dive to stop them from closing in. And you can see that as soon as I hit 650 IA uh, indicator, I level up. I could have gotten on, but um, I'm trying to fly the uh, P38 as if it actually had the problems with the dive I told you before. So I stop there, I check behind, and I see that <laughs> both <laughs> both 109 and 190s have left the try to to catch up with me. And believe me, a plane that can out dive a uh, 190 is <laughs> an excellent diver. Uh, Nasty line is that guy down there. I'm going to overwatch him, but he's going to dive and I want to keep my ulti to hike, so, well, let's go on for the next move. And the next move is me focusing on what I shouldn't be focusing. Uh, that's Top Hat. That's a great, great historical battle fighter. Uh, so, well, I see a good chance to... Um, he's going for the bombers, this is Bolt. I see a good chance to catch up with him, so I level up, he's diving, and I want to catch up him in the uh, his way out. But the only problem I'm going to find here is that I'm not checking my 6. 
and uh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Standard defensive maneuver of the P38 versus a Focul 490. Close the turn. Um, I start flat turning. I deploy flaps. And yeah, that's it. The 109 and the 190 is forced to disengage. Of course, mm, I couldn't keep it up simply because he had gotten the fuel, uh, the coolant lines of my right engine and was um, losing power. So from here, what I did was just dive away and go for the baseland and quit the game because by the time I landed, the game was mostly lost. But you can see that um, the plane actually turns well. I was uh, flat out turning that uh, Focus 180. So, yeah. Right here I'm watching around and I'm noticing the engine is damaged. So I'm going to set up. I'm heading for the base and that's going to be it. The reason I put these two videos up is because the P-38 uh, is um, challenged in, in defensive flying. I mean, the lack of roll in or the excess roll inertia really hurts the plane. So you probably have noticed that my uh, defensive man moves in this plane were totally different than the ones I use in different planes. Uh, most of the time I try to use roll based moves like barrel rolls, scissors, rolling scissors to force over suits. In this case I simply couldn't because the plane simply ro doesn't roll that well. And instead I focused on something else, else which is the surprisingly decent turning of this plane with combat flats on. Uh, well that's it for defensive flying, let's see a proper game. And here we are uh, above Korea, going against the Soviets. Um, I'm coming at maybe 3,500. It's not that big of uh, an altitude. Um, I generally climb out a lot more, but the Russians are not known for climbing a lot. So, uh, yeah, that's actually that MiG-3 and that Air-2 are the two highest enemies. And the MiG-3 is clearly coming for me. And here you are going to see what I was telling you about the excellent maneuverability of this plane in the vertical plane. Uh, I have a lot of speed. This guy is coming directly for me and you know what's coming. Direct vertical move. He's hanging on his prop. He's unable to close down. And as soon as I, as soon as I hit maybe 120, which is around 20 kilometers per hour before I do in any other plane, I can use the the rudder to pull down on that guy how stable it is it's amazing and here i totally mess up my my approach you all notice that he gives me a perfect shot but i don't apply the proper lead uh, and i miss all of them level up zoom away or zoom away I'm gonna stop trying. To, I'm gonna start trying to say zoom instead of zoom because everyone laughs at me when I say zoom. So zoom in a way. <laughs> um, he's clearly diving for the deck, so I'm going to follow. There are no more high altitude enemies, so this battle is ours. Again, look at how this thing dives. Even without throttle, it accelerates like mad. And that's going to be a problem. When compressibility is implemented into the game, that's going to be a problem. So, with engine good, again, I'm trying to fly the plane as realistically as I could. I drop down behind those guys. Miss the shot. Zoom away. <laughs> Loop on the vertical. It's rock. So this plane is rock solid in the vertical. Really, really. It's a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic plane and very stable. Good, good plan for. You can see that the plane doesn't wobble at all. Get some hits on that guy. Keep on going. Zoom again. Ah, he's going to get down it. I mean, he has a guy on his six, and I'm going to get an assist out of it only. I should have one kill by now. That MiG-3 should have been mine, but, well, whatever. Fall down on that Yak-1. 
Try to lead, miss again. Move up. Barrel roll. Fall down on him. Well, that was actually a lag displacement roll. But well, you can see this is a rape train with all the marks of it. So, well, that one is dispatched. Next one in line is the Jack 90. Take a look around, be sure nothing is behind me. And just close on with him. Also, keep in mind, this is a very heavy fighter. And you can see that in how well it accelerates in the dive and how well it keeps its speed, its speed in low G maneuvers. I spot a higher light GG3, I'm guessing a Type 66. And well, the Jack, the Jack 90, I, I'm sure everyone is going to go for him. So I correct for the la, uh, light GG, which is clearly trying to clear the Jack 96. So I aim accordingly. Because it's clear that guy is going to try to to kill uh, our blue, which is currently attacking the Jack 90. La G3 breaks away. Try to correct, but soon I notice the Jack uh, the Jack 90 is going to give me a good shot. So. I aim, miss, miss. Um, uh, the problem with this plane is that I actually try to fire from two, two way out, because the the go the, the, the nose cone mob amount of weapons. There you go. I got his tail, and this is unfortunate. First of all, I get, uh, I don't get the kill, which was really really bad. And second of all, I actually tipped the guy with my wind tip and. Uh, well, the plane actually doesn't maneuver that bad. I mean, probably I'm missing a wind tip here. I can feel it, but I can still keep on going, more or less. I can maneuver, but I can more or less go in a in a straight line. There you go. I close up behind him. Drop. You can see that the plane actually. Ah, uh, there you go. Wind is on. Uh, you can see the the plane actually felt a lot. Uh, the loss. Well, the black wing, and I was very, 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 very unfortunate because that guy was dead. But the problem is, this plane is so damn large, so damn big that I thought I was safely uh, overshooting him, but no, I actually hit him. So that's a kill I didn't get uh, given. As if I've gotten it, but well, he re registered a crash, and what are you going to do? Another thing worth noting is how accurate the damage model is. I actually scratched that guy with my wingtip and even while the graphics don't depict it, because you can't see it, uh, I have a black wing. That means catastrophic structural damage. But the plane is not hard to fly, it's not hard to maneuver, it's as I was just wishing my wingtip. Also you can see it in the damage uh, plane, in the damage model uh, in the middle left, that I still have the aileron. That means that whatever that collided with that guy wasn't my wing, just my wingtip. And the plane doesn't maneuver that bad. Had they collided with a larger part of uh, my wing, probably this would be unflyable. So that means a hugely, hugely detailed uh, damage model, which is really, really, really cool to see. Um, so, well, that was this battle, um, a battle where I could have gotten easily three kills. I just get one. Still not bad rewards and um, still a very nice fly. Uh, and it, a, a very nice fi uh, fight. Um, the plane is pretty good. I can tell you that. So let's check the results and go back to Angar for the conclusion. So, well, there you go. You could see that the plane is really, really, really good. Um, it has its limits. I mean, you can't expect something else from a plane that is almost nine tons heavy um, and I mean it's very ma maneuverable for its size and, size and weight but come on you're going against single engine fighters they are su supposed to be more maneuverable still it's a very 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 fun plane to fly 
as long as you are in a team that actually knows how to fly, of course, because if you are left alone being the only high one and versus higher one on nines or uh, one uh, one nine is, it's not going to be fun. But those are American teams for you. What are you going to do? Uh, so well, that's it for today's video. Uh, very much anticipated thing, a P38 that actually is effective. Uh, I'm very. Uh, hope you ha had fun. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you later.